I'm always on the lookout for a compact and small gimbal that's powerful enough to support not only my GoPro with the media mod, but also a smartphone and even a full frame mirrorless camera. But most gimbals out there are either too big and too complicated, or they're too small in that they only support one type of camera and they're not very flexible. Enter the Juin Crane M3 as well as the Crane M2S. These are brand new gimbals that do fit the bill of being small and compact yet able to support all of the cameras that I just mentioned. In this video, I'm going to tell you more about these gimbals, specifically eight big differences between them, as well as one big reason why you should buy one gimbal over the other. First of all, if you have no idea what a gimbal is, then there's a video right here or in the description below, and I'll tell you all about what a gimbal is and why you might need one. But in a nutshell, a gimbal is an electronic stabilizer that allows you to get smooth video footage, and it's a much better option than using your hands or using a tripod or a monopod. And now let's get specific about these two gimbals right here. So the Juin Crane M3 just came out in November 2021, so it's relatively new. However, the Juin Crane M2S came out today in March 2022, so it's the newest little compact gimbal out of Juin's line. But the Crane M2S is actually the new version of the Crane M2, which came out in 2019. Now, a lot of you out there may have heard of or are even using the Crane M2 because that was the go-to gimbal for most of us that wanted to use our GoPros along with the media mod and accessories on a gimbal. There are dedicated GoPro gimbals out there, but most of them only supported the GoPro by itself and not with the media mod and extra accessories. But the Crane M2 allowed you to do that. So I will talk a little bit about the Crane M2 because a lot of you might be wondering if it's worth upgrading to one of these models. But the focus of today's video is gonna be comparing the Crane M3 with the Crane M2S. So let's start with some of the features that these gimbals all have in common. First of all, they all have a quarter inch tripod hole on the bottom of the gimbal as well as the side of the gimbal for attaching mini tripods or other accessories. They also have an LCD screen to show status and settings and a mode button to cycle through the various gimbal shooting modes. Speaking of which, there are six in particular. There's pan follow, follow, lock, POV, vertical, and go. And there's also a joystick to control where the camera points. All three gimbals can also connect to the ZY Play smartphone app and be controlled via a mobile phone, both iPhone and Android. And finally, all three gimbals can do panoramas, time lapses, and motion lapses. And now onto those eight big differences between the gimbals. In terms of size and weight, both the Crane M3 and the Crane M2S are bigger and heavier than the original Crane M2. The Crane M2 comes in at 500 grams, while the M2S is 549 grams, and the Crane M3 is 700 grams. Now, the main reason why the Crane M3 and the Crane M2S are bigger and heavier is because they can support bigger and heavier cameras, specifically mirrorless full-frame cameras certain ones anyway. And that's a big upgrade compared to the original Crane M2, which was only able to support up to the Canon M50, which is a crop sensor camera, along with the 15 to 45 millimeter lens. So the Crane M3 is able to support the most amount of weight because it does weigh the most. So it can support a Sony full frame camera and a 24 to 70 F4 lens, which is a pretty big camera combination. It's what I have right here. Actually, this is the A7R3, but it's roughly the same size as the A7 IV and it's pretty big and hefty. Now the Crane M2S is also able to support a Sony full frame camera such as the A7S III or the A7 IV, but it is not quite able to support a 24-70 f4 lens. You'd have to use a slightly smaller and lighter weight lens. So I was able to use the Sony A7 IV along with my Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on both of these gimbals and they handled that combination really, really well. The footage was actually quite smooth and it wasn't a big burden to be carrying around that camera and gimbal combination. 
So if you have a full frame camera that you wanna use on a gimbal, then you definitely wanna consider either the Crane M3 or the Crane M2S and not the original Crane M2. Next, let's talk about camera compatibility. So all three gimbals have some form of camera control in which you can attach your camera to the gimbal and you can also use the handles and the controls on the gimbal to control certain features on your camera. But when it comes to the Crane M3, the base model only allows you to connect and control Sony mirrorless cameras. If you want to control other cameras, then you have to buy another accessory which plugs into the bottom of the Crane M3 and that allows you to connect other cameras such as Fujifilm, Nikon, Canon, Panasonic, and other mirrorless cameras like that. Meanwhile, the Crane M2S, right out of the box, you can connect and control pretty much any camera, so it's not just limited to Sony mirrorless cameras. But when it comes to GoPros, you can indeed put the GoPro on the gimbal to get smooth footage. However, you cannot control the GoPro with the gimbal handle. And if you're looking at me like, Susie, you don't need to use a gimbal with a GoPro because it's hyper smooth. Well, watch this video right here and I'll tell you the reasons why you might still want to use a gimbal with a GoPro. So if camera control via the gimbal handle is important to you and you don't use a Sony camera, then the Crane M2S is the way to go. Next is battery life. So all three gimbals have built-in batteries that are rechargeable via USB-C, but they all have pretty different run times. So the original Crane M2 lasts for about seven hours and the Crane M3 lasts for eight hours. Meanwhile, the brand new Crane M2S lasts a whopping 10 and a half hours, which is pretty long compared to the rest of these gimbals. The Crane M2S also has the shortest recharging time, which is about an hour 40 minutes versus two hours for the Crane M2 and the Crane M3. The next point is a pretty interesting accessory that I'm seeing a lot of newer gimbals come with, and that is a built-in fill light. So both the Crane M2S and the Crane M3 have this little fill light, and it's really nice because it has different brightness levels, and both of these gimbals also come with little color filters. And so that can be really handy if you're shooting in a darker environment or you just want a little splash of light. And that's something that the original Crane M2 doesn't come with. So if you like that little fill light, then you want to go with one of these newer gimbals. Next, let's talk about build quality. So again, both of these gimbals are really lightweight, but also really sturdy feeling. But I would say that the Crane M2S feels probably the most lightweight and therefore also a little bit cheaper in terms of you can tell that the handle is pretty much all plastic. Therefore, it just feels a little bit, I don't know, less sturdy or less solid, especially if you compare it to the Crane M3 which has a really nice thick handle and it feels like it's made out of more than just plastic. It just has a nicer feeling in your hands and I think that this really comes into play especially if you're going to be using a full frame camera with a bigger zoom lens on your gimbal. And I would say that that stability also translates into the video quality that I got. So I used my Sony a7 IV with the 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on both of these gimbals. And again, while both gimbals could definitely support that weight, I do feel like the Crane M3 was a lot smoother, both in terms of usability and the resulting video quality. Another thing that I noticed is that when I had my Sony a7 IV balanced on my Crane M2S, and I was trying to use that gimbal as I was filming, my camera would kind of bump into parts of the gimbal and this is the main reason why I would recommend the Crane M3 over the Crane M2S. Even though both gimbals can support a full frame camera, the Crane M3 just does it a little bit better. I think it's evident not only in the video quality that you get, but also the overall usability of using your full frame camera with the Crane M3. It just feels a lot smoother and a lot more flawless. Speaking of usability, let's deep dive into that a little bit. So when I am using gimbals, there are two things that I really hate about most gimbals. The first is how hard it is to mount and unmount my camera to the gimbal. And the second is how difficult it is to physically balance my camera on the gimbal. Now the nice thing about the Crane M3 and the Crane M2S is that both of these gimbals address both of those pain points and make it a lot easier. So both of these gimbals now come with a quick release plate that attaches to the quarter inch tripod hole on the bottom of your camera. And then you can easily just snap this plate into your gimbal and it is so easy to mount and unmount your camera. All three gimbals also 
have three lockable axes, and this makes it much easier to balance a camera on the gimbals and also to carry or stow them when you're not using them. Both of these features are a big upgrade compared to the Crane M2, which was a lot harder to mount a camera and also to balance the gimbal. So the usability has gone up on both the Crane M3 and the Crane M2S. And the final thing to talk about is the price. How much do these gimbals cost? Well, on the high end is the Crane M3. The gimbal by itself is 369 US dollars, but that price only goes up as you add accessories. So if you want something like the phone mount and also the case, which I should show you. This is a really nice zippered case, which is really lightweight and it holds the gimbal and it can be had for a little bit of extra money. So $469 if you want the case along with the phone mount, or you can pay $649 if you want the case, the phone mount, the M3, and also the expansion plate, which is necessary if you want to control cameras other than Sony cameras then it's $649, which is a lot of money for this gimbal. Now the Crane M2S is a little bit cheaper at 269 US dollars just for the gimbal by itself. But if you want extras like the phone mount and the white case, then it goes up to 369 US dollars. And finally, the cheapest of them all is the Crane M2, which is pretty old at this point. It's been around since 2019, but it's still very functional and usable. And it's only 179 US dollars, which is a lot cheaper compared to these guys right here. So out of the Crane M3, M2, and M2S, which gimbal is best for you? Well, if you're on a budget and you don't plan to use a full frame camera with your gimbal, then go for that Crane M2 because it is the cheapest and it's still a really solid option. The only thing is that it's gonna have a little bit more of a learning curve because it's a little bit harder to mount and balance your camera on the gimbal, but it's still a really good option. But if you plan to use a full frame camera with your gimbal, then you definitely wanna go with either the Crane M3 or the Crane M2S. I would say that the Crane M3, although it is heavier and a little bit bigger, it feels the most solid. Like I don't have any qualms about using my full frame camera with my 24 to 70 F4 lens on the Crane M3. I think it does a really stellar job. And I can't quite use that exact camera and lens combination on the Crane M2S. I wouldn't use that 24 to 70 F4. I would stick with, you know, my 20 millimeter F1.8 or something smaller and lighter with the Crane M2S. So personally, if I'm gonna be using my biggest camera and lens combination, then I'll be rolling with the Juin Crane M3. However, if I'm going to be using a slightly smaller prime lens on my a7 IV, or if I'm just going to be using my GoPro with the media mod, and I might want to occasionally swap out my phone, then I'm going to be going with the smaller Dew and Crane M2S. And I would reach for the Crane M2S over the M2, just because it's a lot easier to mount and unmount my camera, as well as balance the gimbal, and it has a longer battery life and a shorter recharging time. And this extra fill light is really nice on the Crane M2S. So I really think that the Crane M2S is a nice upgrade from the original Crane M2. And it's also a slightly more budget-friendly option and a lightweight option compared to the bigger Crane M3. But now I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you think about these gimbals and which one you would be reaching for in the comments below. And if you want to know about my previous all-in-one gimbal that I used to reach for, you can watch that review right here.